UN 영어 뉴스, 디즈니 앳 100, 와이더 마우스 하우스, 프로프트 하드, 이니스 센티너리 이어. Until quite recently, the studio looked unstoppable on its way to dominating Hollywood. But in 2023, its box office plummeted, and its magic faded. What has gone wrong? And the year 2023 should have been a magical one for the Walt Disney Company. The studio was founded by Walt and Roy Disney in 1923, so a host of films, books, and events had been planned to celebrate its centenary. Recent cartoons such as Frozen and Moana had proven that its animation department was thriving, and various mergers had given the company control of the Pixar, Star Wars, and the Marvel franchises too. It was an incredible collection of brands, all in one place, says Charles Gant, Screen International's box office editor. In 2019, Disney looked, looked unstoppable. Indeed, 7 out of the 10 films in 2019's Global Top 10 were Disney Productions, each of them with box office takings, box office takings of over $1 billion. If it seemed unlikely, that 2023 would be quite as extraordinarily stellar, there must have been a hope it wouldn't be far off. Disney's right, la latest animation, Wish, was intended to celebrate its 100th year, but it has had a poor showing at the box office. Instead, it became known as the year when the studio's magic faded. At the time of writing, the year's top three global hits are Barbie, the Super Mario Bros. movie, and Oppenheimer. All of them made by Disney's rivals, the so-called Mouse House, is represented by Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 in fourth place, and the live-action remake of The Little Mermaid at number 9. But the hits were outnumbered by the misses. The Marvels was the lowest grossing, grossing release ever to come from the Marvel Studios. It was Gant tells BBC Culture, a flat out calamity and a reminder to studio heads that just because a film grosses more than $1 billion worldwide, as Captain Marvel did in 2019, that does not mean audiences are eager for a sequel. This year's other Marvel of Falling, Ant Man and the Wasp, or Quantumania was a disappointment. The Haunted Mansion was a bona fide flop. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny made half the money that Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal School did back in 2008. A Pixar cartoon, Elemental, had a dismal opening weekend, and although its fortunes improved, Pixar's president Jim Morris was hardly gushing when he told uh, Variety's Rebecca Rubin in August at the box office we are looking at now, he should do, he should do better than break even, theoretically. This will certainly be a profitable film for the Disney company. The underwhelming year was rounded off by Wish, a cartoon that was made specifically to commemorate a century of Disney animation. Audiences didn't feel like joining the party, and it was beaten on its opening weekend by Napoleon and The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. It's a far, far cry from Disney's pre-pandemic Thanksgiving releases, said Rubin in Variety. Gant points out that it's possible to exaggerate his recent misfortunes and that some of the numbers 
war not so bad. But this was the first year since 2014, if you don't count the pandemic interlude, that none of Disney's films broke the billion dollar barrier. It turns out that when you wish upon a star, your dreams don't always come true. The possible reasons for it was how did 2023 go so wrong? Pundits have been puzzling over the Mars houses and horribleness for weeks, identifying several factors. A key one being that the COVID-19 pandemic got people into the habit of watching films at home rather than in cinemas. And as Disney has its own streaming service, everyone knows where they can find the studio's output. If you, were, if you are a Disney Plus subscriber, the logic goes, why would you buy a ticket for a film you could see for no extra charge a month or two later? Then uh, there is a superhero fatigue, i.e. the public is enough already response to a wave of second string comic book characters. And this phenomenon, it this is Flash Warner's films, such as Blue Beat, The Flash, and Shaja, Fury of Ga the Gas, just as hard as it hit Marvel's. The Marvel's was the lowest ever grossing Marvel release, showing how the superhero franchise may be flagging. But there is another more important explanation for Disney's was was this year. The films just weren't good enough. As diverse as they were, what they had in common was their sloppiness, the weak concepts, scrappy visuals, and the muddled plots, which must have been apparent to everyone who saw them, as noted by Brendan Crane as screen rent which was the first Disney cartoon to receive a rotten rating on review. On review aggregator website Rotten Tomatoes since Chicken Hidden in 2005. Not that this issue was confined to 2023. Last year's Disney science fiction cartoon Strange World and the Pixar's Toy Story spin-off right here. A flop for the same rudimentary region, but this year film after film had enough glaring flaws to turn off audiences and critics alike. Never mind the pandemic or superhero fatigue, or the lure of streaming. Whatever the circumstances, few people who sat through Wish World and Marvels can have felt that they deserved to be world conquering box office smashes. If anything corrected the substandard subs, sub quality of these films, it was how backward looking they were. Perhaps studio executives were too focused on the company's centenary, but they sent the intent on living up for more glories rather than trying anything creative. They banked on nostalgia at the expense of everything else. The slogan on many of their posters could have been like something you've seen before, but worse. This rural resting compla complacency was in stark contrast with the boldness of Barbie and Oppenheimer. One of the, these films flitted between time periods as it examined why the human race was determined to destroy itself. The other used a children's doll to mock the patriarchy and finished with a visit to a gynecologist, David Fear and Rolling Stone, called Bobby, the most super sub sub subversible, the most subversible blockbuster of the 21st century, and Disney, the mouse house, was selling more of the same old stuff and the audiences weren't buying it. This might seem surprising given that the company's last golden year 2019 was defined 
by Seekers and Remax. The seven films it had in the global top 10 included Avengers Endgame, Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, Frozen 2, Toy Story 4, The Lion King, and Aladdin. And yet, while all of these films were derivative on one level, they all promised the audience a glimpse of something new. Avengers Endgame and Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker were both long-awaited conclusions to epic multi-part fantasies. The Lion King had photorealistic animals. Frozen 2 was a big budget sequel to recent Disney cartoons, something which had never been tried before. A state of creative inertia. Compare all of those to this year's crop of Disney films. The return of an aging Indiana Jones. We had that in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal School. And that wasn't exactly deadly either. The Little Mermaid. The novel novelty of live action remakes has worn off. And as this one involved talking sea creatures. It was obvious from the first trailers that it would have been better left as a cartoon. Elemental. Well, Pixar's writers often imagine that voice, cars, and emotions are people. So imagine that the classical elements of fire, water, land, and air are people. Are people was par for the course. As for wish. It wasn't a sequel or a remake, but it was still too familiar for comfort. Disney has brought us a few too many sweet-natured, determined, but clumsy fairy tale princesses in the past decade. And the latest one, Asha, was surrounded by references to Peter Pan, Mary Poppins, Pinocchio, and more. As Donald Clark noted in The Irish Times, it's a backwards glance. Backwards glance serves serve only to remind us how trans, trans, transcendent Disney animation was, was as listed as a fortune, without offering any hopeful synapse signpost to the future. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny provided diminishing returns in all senses. And what about Marvel's films? The trouble there was the trouble there was that 2019's Avengers Endgame rounded off a decade of interlinked blockbusters. It was the final chapter in what was dubbed the Infinity Saga. So that everything since then has felt like a postscript or a footnote worth a glance if you are a fan of the title characters but no longer an essential part of a major ongoing narrative. Luckily for Disney, Guardians of the Galaxy always seemed to be largely separate from the rest of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So Volume 3 could be seen as the final of a distinctive trilogy. But Ant-Man and Captain Marvel still seemed to be getting over the Infinity Saga instead of moving on. Still, if there was a simple reason for Disney's troubles, the good news is that there is a simple solution to that too. All the studio has to do is it make better films, admittedly. That's slightly easier said than done. But this year's failures should at least encourage the company to be more adventurous. We're still talking about a mega corporation, of course. So adventurous is a relative term. We can expect the superhero side of things to be shaken up by a revival of the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, Marvel properties which were once owned by 20th Century Fox and have now been gobbled up by Disney. We can expect a live action remake of Moana and it's the first of these remakes to feature the actors who did the voices in the cartoon. So maybe Disney won't be tremendously 
original as type suit any type suit but it may well be unoriginal in some intriguing new ways that could be enough to bring back a spark of magic.